Hey gang, this week we are talking about Kirchhoff's laws. And I like to think of them more as observations because once we get into it, it makes it just seems like common sense, but they are immutable observations, so therefore we will call them laws. So let's jump into this really quickly and talk about what we have going on this first video. First of all, we're going to revisit the concept of a voltage rise and a voltage drop because this is key and the very core of the understanding of what Kirchhoff's voltage law is. That's what we're talking about this first video is just the voltage law, and next video we'll get into the current law. We're going to go through a circuit together, and then we're going to define it in its official definition. But the official definition seems a little heady. When you look at it, it's just more of an obvious uh, footnote in the way that circuits operate. So I'm going to try my best not to over explain this because of its simplicity. And you guys tell me what you think. So let's get into it. Right, so let's go back into a simple circuit. We're doing all multiples of 10 because I want to make the calculations be super easy. We're going to look at a circuit, unknown amperage right now, doesn't matter, with a 10 volt voltage source and a 100 ohm resistor. So we know batteries and voltage sources are merely potential energy, right? And that's what one terminal is, right? The positive terminal on a battery is the max potential that we have, that max pressure. And on the exact opposite, we have the the absence of pressure. And something happens when we go through the circuit, right? We have this voltage pushing our electrons through the circuit, and we have our current, the actual volume of the electrons. But as it goes through a resistance in a circuit, and we're talking about specifically in simple loops, something happens. The voltage drops across the resistance. And we're going to talk about exactly what that value is because it's actually something that we can define really easily once we see how this works. I'm going to jump into it on the tablet and we'll take a look. Okay, so here we have our circuit, our simple circuit. Let's write some stuff down. We got 10 volts and I think we said 100 ohms because we want it to be as simplified as possible. And in all honesty, we don't even need a value for the resistance because what we want to do is examine the drop of voltage across a resistor. So here's what's happening and what KVL or Kirchhoff's voltage law is demonstrating. That here we have a voltage. Let me, uh, let's put a fictitious oscilloscope here, simply a scope that will help us identify the voltage. And we've got, oh man, I've got 9 volts written here. Let's pretend that doesn't exist, and we'll say that it's now 10 volts. So if there was no voltage going through the circuit, we would have a flatlining circuit. If we could visualize the electricity in the circuit, it would be zero. But as soon as we have our max potential shown, that batteries hooked up, our wave shoots up to a full 10, right? We're at our max potential, 10 volts of pressure going through our system. So let's, let's take a look at what happens here. As the voltage is pushing the electrons around the circuit and it meets this first resistance, something happens. A voltage drop occurs across the component. Kirchhoff observed that no matter what in a looped circuit, the return voltage is always zero volts. And that's a key piece of knowledge that we need. What this law is identifying for us, it's laying the foundation, is that 10 volts are the max potential, the total voltage will leave our battery here, but on return, there will be zero voltage. That pressure will be used up in the circuit by the resistance. So. If we have a simple circuit with only one resistor, and we can identify that on one side of the resistor we have 10 volts, and upon the return back into the battery we have 0 volts, then it's safe to assume that somehow we lose the entirety of the potential, right? And our voltage drop across this resistor is actually 10 volts. We've lost 10 volts of potential across this resistor. And I'm glad we have this oscilloscope here because let's just say here on the oscilloscope is where the resistance occurs. 
we've got our full 10 volts, 10 volts, and then it just drops. The potential is completely gone because it's been used up by the resistance in the circuit. Now we're going to get a little crazy. I just added a second resistor and it's also of the value of 100 ohms. At this point it really doesn't matter what the resistance is as long as we're looking at two resistors with the exact same resistance. They could just be X. We can say these are X ohms of resistance. But we want to do a little mental experiment here knowing that on one side of the circuit we have 10 volts or 10 volts strong here and on the other using the observation from Gustav Kirchhoff, we have zero volts going back in. We want to figure out exactly what the drop is when we expand the number of resistances on our circuit. It's safe to say that if we have two of the exact same resistances in a circuit, then effectively what we're doing is we're going to cut the voltage in half each time. We had 10 volts with one resistor and then it knocked it down to zero. If we have two Presumably, what we're really doing is we're taking away 5 volts across the first drop and 5 volts across the other drop, meaning that there would be 5 volts in between. But I don't want you to take my word for it. Let's solve this mathematically and see if we can get down to it. All right, let's use Ohm's law, and we're going to try to calculate the voltage drop across each resistance. And let's see if our hypothesis is correct here. So first we got VAR, we're off to a good start. We need to find, of course, the total resistance so that we can get the current so that we can find the drop of each individual resistance. Obviously we know this because we've done this in the past, but let's do it together. All right, we know our voltage is 10. Our current is currently unknown and we're looking for actual RT, total resistance. And that is going to be 200 ohms. Let's divide our 200 ohms here and on this side as well, meaning that I, or our current, is actually equal to 0 0.05 amps. All right, that's great. So now we have our total current as a known. Now with our total current in the system known, we can actually use Ohm's law again to further deduce each individual component of resistance that we're looking at. So let's get this out of here and let us do that together. Our new formula is gonna look like this. We're looking for the voltage drop across resistance one, so R1. So let's identify this as V1 is what we're looking for. V1 is gonna be equal to we know in a series circuit the current is consistent, so it doesn't matter. I times R1, this specific resistance. Let's fill in our values. We're trying to find voltage drop one. Our current is 0 0.05 amps. And our resistance is 100 ohms. I'll give you guys a second to do this on your own. And I should hope that simple math skills served us well. And 0 0.05 amps times 100 ohms is equal to simply 5. That's kind of what we're looking for, right? We were, 5 volts is what we expected to find right here. So because the resistance values are the exact same, we know that R2 is going to be the exact same. V2 is 5 volts. So what we're seeing here is 5 volts dropping across this resistor, 5 volts dropping across this resistor, and this equals the 10 volts of potential that the battery provided. So this is really what this law comes down to. The voltage drop for every resistance component within a looped circuit will be the sum of the potential in the battery. This is all it really is, is the summation. If we could 
get this stuff out of the way. And we wanted to sum it up, we can use sigma for summation, voltage rise, which is basically our full potential, minus the summation of voltage drop. That's every one of these resistances that may be in our circuit is equal to zero. The voltage drop in a simple series circuit that's a loop will always add up to the full potential of the battery. That's KVL for you. So I know what you're saying. You're like, Jay, I get it. I get it. That makes perfect sense. But what if we have resistances of different values? You got to explain this to me. And I totally get that. So let's do this. What's great about this observation or this law is that we have this sense of consistency. The voltage drop is always going to be proportional to the resistance that's enforced in the circuit. So let's erase this. Let's change some of the values up and let's see how this holds true. Oh man, I changed the whole game on us. Look at what I got here. Resistor 1 now has 300 ohms of resistance, while R2 still has the original 100 ohms of resistance. So we're going to have to redo our game plan and figure out the total current so we can solve the voltage drops across each resistor and see if our hypothesis about this consistency and proportionality is holding true. Let's kick it out. Here we go. V is equal to IR is going to serve as well. So why don't you go ahead and calculate the total current in the circuit and we'll come back together and do the voltage drops for each one of the resistors starting with R1 and then dropping down to R2 and see if we can notice any commonality to what we were thinking we would see. I hope your calculations evaluated to the same 0.025 amps of total current that I got. So I set up the next several equations using exactly that and we can walk through this together. So we want to look at getting voltage drop one, which is this resistor right here. And we already know that V1 is going to be equal to this consistent current through a series circuit to 0 0.025 amps times 300 ohms. And lo and behold, that gives us 7.5 volts. I want to throw a negative in here. And the way I think about it is we started with 10 volts and we are going to drop 7.5, somewhere around there. 7.5 volts is dropping. Through R1. So, if we're looking at a voltage drop for R2, we have 0 0.025 amps across 100 ohms, and we should see, let's, let me get my right color here, R2, that our voltage drop should be 2.5 volts. Let's go negative 2.5 volts. And that's the equivalent of being here at 2.5 volts and dropping the rest of the way to zero volts because we know we started at 10 volts here. We dropped 7.5 from those 10. So if we were to take a measurement at this space, it would be 2.5 volts. And we're dropping the duration, the rest of that voltage, so that on the other side of resistor 2, we're at 0 volts, thus conforming with Kirchhoff's voltage law. I hope that makes sense, but I would like to point out, if we took our 7.5 drop across R1 and our 2.5 drop across R2, huzzah! It's 10 volts. That's exactly the voltage that was the full potential of our battery, right? You should also note that resistor 1 is 300 ohms. Resistor 2 is 100 ohms. So R1 is three times more resistance than R1. If you were to take 2.5 volts, which is the drop across R2, the 100 ohms, you would get 
7.5 volts. The proportionality is intact, the consistency is there, and that's why Kirchhoff's voltage is an immutable observable law. I hope that made a lot of sense to you guys. In the next video, we're going to move on to Kirchhoff's current law, and we're going to wrap this thing up. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.